it, it, it started in the planning process. So, so I ended up, you know, very, very prosaic, but, but um, with three different colors of um, post-it notes and, um, you know, had, had one color for the 1940s, one for the present day, and also one for the 1960s, because there was a very small, small um, thread in, in, in the 1960s as well. Um, and, and so I, I plotted the stories separately and then interwove them sort of with the post-it notes sort of see, saw where one thing could go because even within the two dual timelines they, they don't read chronologically in the book I hope they make sense um to the reader but but it's not it's not chronological it's not you know two parallel stories but but when you think about it we all live a dual timeline don't we because we all you know the past is constantly intruding on the future you know, it may not be as clear cut as in a dual timeline book, but but none of us is sort of living entirely in the moment, in the present. I mean, I wish we could in some ways. So the excitement, this is this is the UK cover, which is a bit different from the US cover. Um, so it's, it's about uh, two World War II veterans, um, Penny and Josephine Williamson, who um, are in their 90s and they're about to be awarded the Légion d'honneur. Um, in Paris um, and uh, it, it, the story sort of flips between their war years and, and the present day you know when, when they're in their 90s and what inspired me to write it was meeting two real World War II veteran sisters um, called Pat and Jean Outram and I was commissioned to be their ghostwriter and um, uh, they, they've, they've been very sort of clear that some um, you know they've been very generous in, in crediting me with with helping them with the book um, and so I spent um, uh, a few months sort of going through their old letters and diaries and talking to them about their experiences and um, having having just the most wonderful time with them. And but at the end of it, I thought, well, yeah, I mean, I'm still very much um, Jean. We lost, unfortunately, she died last year at the age of 97. But Pat, who's now 101, is still is still a good friend. And and I thought, you know, their war years were fascinating, but what I really wanted to write about was the women that they've become, you know, the, the, these, these sort of vivacious, um, energetic 90 somethings. And, um, growing up, I didn't have those elderly female role models. So, so I, I was really sort of blown away by the idea that you don't sort of suddenly fade away age 90, that, you know, age 90, not, not even 90, age 70 or something, but that you can be like Jean, who at 95 was still riding a horse. Um, or, or, you know, you can be like Pat, who, who sort of, you know, can speak in five, five languages, you know, just whatever you throw at her goes on TV, does everything. And, and so I wanted to bring, try and bring that to life, their, their energy in my book. Archie, yes. Well, um, I, th I think he knows by now that he is Archie. So Archie's based on, on my great friend Simon Simon Robinson, um, who is just the most fabulous, kind, gentle um, person, and and he's the World War Two buff who introduced me basically to to the Outram sisters, and then has sort of, you know, held my hand through the whole process of researching about World War Two. So so Archie. Um, is um, the sister's great nephew um, and uh, he sort of you know he, he imagines he's sort of chaperoning these toy ladies around and he imagines they need all this help etc etc but they're really they're constantly out gunning him all the time yeah. the sort of the the basic story of the excitement is it, um, the two sisters one's in the um, women's royal navy and the other one is in the fanny which is the first aid nursing yeomanry and that is what my real life friends did but um, in the excitements that their, their experience spins off into all sorts of secret work which um, so far as I know although though my friends Pat and Jean first both signed the Official Secrets Act they they didn't work as spies although with Jean I was never quite sure she was always sort of dropping hints and setting me puzzles. I did lots of reading around the the women of F section in particular so so the SOE was was the Special Operations Executive which was um, in the UK that was um, sort of precursor to MI5, MI6, it was a sort of intelligence agency um, and um, they had separate sections for the different parts of occupied Europe so F section is the most famous and they trained um, spies like Odette Hallows, Violet Zabo and Noor Inayat Khan um, and Christine Granville, you know these, these women who, who went behind enemy lines and, and did tremendous work.